Um, I have a movie, a podcast sir. where it starts as one thing, and by the end, it's on a completely different subject, and we just act like that's what our podcast is. <laughs> and then on the next one, we start like, oh, this is uh, – welcome back to Fire Talk. And then by the end, it's something completely different <laughs> with a new name, and we never acknowledge <laughs> that it just keeps changing. Just always changing the name. It's did, always a different podcast by the end. Did you see my tweet about my new podcast idea? I think I tagged you in on Facebook. The Mr. Meaner. Mr. Meaner, yeah. Deep yes. dive into unsolved Mr. Meaners. I think that's the greatest podcast idea that's ever been invented, but no one seems to appreciate it enough. The greatest one since uh, What the Dub? What the Dub. The reactions of the actors in some scenes are spontaneous. For example, when the children first enter into the room and see the garden, their reactions are so real. It was really their first view of it, of that particular really set. Really the chocolate factory. Yes. Yeah. That's impressive. What can I say? That's how I do. Have you seen this? Uh, what is it again? <laughs> Yes, this is one of my favorite movies. Really? I love this movie. So we just watched. But I have a lot of issues. I could do an entire podcast on my issues with Grandpa Joe. <laughs> an entire podcast episode? Because that's what we're doing right no. now. No, like a weekly, every episode for an hour a week, I could talk about Grandpa Joe. Yeah. So I just watched this with Harper, my three-year-old. We watched uh-huh. Charlie in the Chocolate Factory first, and then we watched Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory the next day. And okay. Charlie in the Chocolate Factory Har- is not good. Uh, it's not great. I've only seen it once, and I was pretty disappointed. Yeah, go back and watch it again. You will be extra disappointed. I'm thinking I won't. Because Willy Wonka, they have songs. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, they have songs, but you cannot understand a single thing that they're saying. So you can't even sing along with them. That's the best part of a musical is being able yeah, to sing along like with those songs. Yeah, it's like weird voices. It's, like, like... it's all electronica and like, it's just so strange. And the, the Oompa Loompas suck. Like the Oompa Loompas. The Oompa Loompas are terrible in the new one. And Very uncomfortable. Johnny Depp is so weird. Like, uh, Gene Wilder was really oh, good at being uh, not trustworthy. Like, that was yes. his whole character, right? Like, you never knew, is he being honest? Is he lying to you? Is he yeah. being sarcastic? Like, that was his whole character. Willy Wonka, or uh, Johnny Depp's character, was just creepy. Like, just like, he just came off as kind of um, special needs, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, it, Willie, like, uh, Gene Wilder felt like mischievous and untrustworthy and like up to something where yeah. Johnny Depp just, just, I don't know. That's not the, uh, not what came across. Yeah. So I forgot what I was going to say. Basically. Yeah. So I think we've talked about this before, but this movie came out when Johnny Depp was like Johnny at Depp. his peak. Yeah. Johnny Depp or Charlie was at his peak and uh it was it was like we've talked about where oh man every movie we got to get Johnny Depp it's got to be Johnny Depp it's we got to put him in everything no matter what it is well it's Tim Burton and, wasn't it yeah that's true tim burton puts johnny depp in everything he does now i did yeah it's i think it's only johnny depp and helena bonham carter yeah is she in this movie no oh yeah she is she's the, she's she's charlie's mom Helen Barton Carter is? Yeah. Are you sure? Positive. I just watched it. It's her, it's her most normal role. It's, she's almost unrecognizable. She's definitely unrecognizable. Man, I gotta look this up. I'm like 90% sure. I don't think you're right, sir. Yeah, she's Mrs. Bucket. Yeah, that's weird. But anyways, let's talk about the good one. Yes. Willy Wonka and the Child Come Factory. Come with me and you'll see a world of pure na, 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 nation. No. No. no, 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 no. Am I wrong? Four. 
close at first, and then you just got worse and worse. You kept skipping words. And that's yeah. why you got to the end. You ran out of you ran out of words. Imagination is supposed to take up that whole last part, and you finished already. Imagination, no, 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 no. I couldn't remember what went in that spot. Come with me. And, and you'll, you'll be, see, you'll see, in a world of pure imagination. Take a look, oh, yeah. and you'll see something. I love every single song in this movie. Yes, the original has got good songs. Every, Other than I, songs. the "I Want It Now" one by, uh, oh yeah, by uh, Violet. No, Veruca, Veruca Salt. Uh, I like that song too. The only one I hate is the Cheer Up Charlie, which is the worst song of almost all time, and that's why they <laughs> cut it from the. <laughs> I don't Cheer remember. up, Charlie. You know what I you didn't like the- about the original though? What's uh, that? In the beginning, when they first buy him, uh, when they first buy Charlie uh, a chocolate bar, he's yes. he's like, everyone's like, you know, just just know that. You might not get it, but at least you still get chocolate. Like, hey, you know, we we right. we scraped together all our money to give you this opportunity to try to get this golden ticket, but like, it's probably not going to happen. And he like opens it, and he's like, oh, I got it, I got it, and everyone's like, what? And he's like, you really thought I got it? Like a little <laughs> jerk. And I was like, come on, Charlie. Like your family is so poor. Had fooled, didn't I? <laughs> Your family is so poor and they did so much to try to give you this little gift and you got to be a jerk. Uh, I just want to yeah. punch him right in the face. So I, I have a few issues with Charlie. I have a few more issues with the candy man in the beginning. And then I have a lot of issues with Grandpa Joe. But <laughs> the candy man, kind of jerk, right? He's literally giving away candy. There's just a handful of kids giving away so much candy, dumping it over their heads. It's, it's spilling everywhere. Charlie comes in and he's like the poorest kid. No, nothing for Charlie. Why couldn't he get in on all that free candy? I think they had already paid for all of the other candy. You think they just had a tab? Yeah. Well, cause in the school, when the teacher's asking him about, uh, how much like percentages, I don't know if you remember that part. He's like, yeah, what? Of course. he, um, the one girl's like, I bought a hundred and another kid's like, I bought 150. And he's working he says, out the percentages, and he's like, "I bought two. He's like, "I like, can't two hundred, <laughs> no, just two. He's like, "I can't he's figure like, two. out two per, two out of a thousand <laughs> percent." <laughs> There's a lot of scenes in this movie, especially revolving around people trying to get the golden ticket, that I really were way over my head as a kid. Yeah, but you seem as an, and they're pretty funny. Yeah, like the uh, the lady's husband who was kidnapped, and the <laughs> ransom is they want her case of chocolate bars, and she's like really having to think about it (laughs) well that that bothered me because i feel like she would have already opened it yeah like what are you waiting for yeah seriously Um, i'm talking talking about when he's like singing a song and he's like dumping the candy in their hands and it's like spilling everywhere it's so much it's so much waste and charlie can't get in on just like the handful of skittles Uh, it's upsetting (laughs) Um, so what's your issues with grandpa Joe? Oh, jeez, Grandpa Joe. Okay. So this guy is what? A hundred years old. A million. I think he's sitting in bed. He's having his mom or his mother-in-law. I can't remember whose mom is who at this point. Take care of him and his, his wife. And then the other parents. I thought it was their Doesn't kids. It... It's grandpa Joe's kids. Yeah, no, that's what it's. Well, you said parents of Charlie's Charlie. mom and the parents of Charlie. Dad, that's what I meant. Yeah. And he's 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 bedridden. He can't get up. He can't uh, he can't get a job. He has no income. He has n- almost no value whatsoever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, there comes this golden ticket. And what's he do? He's jumping out of bed. He's springing all over the place as if the, this is the the first time. Well, Come he on. said this is the first time in twenty years he's gotten out of bed. Oh, so uh, I'm sorry. It takes like this golden opportunity for me to get off my butt and like try. So for the last 20 years, when I was 20 years younger, I could have been doing something. Maybe we wouldn't live in this shack. <laughs> I have so many issues with Grandpa Joe. And then on top of all that, you would think living 
in this in this bed and drinking cabbage water for like 20 years or whatever, you'd be a little more humble of a person. But no, they get to the factory and he wants to break the rules and he wants to steal. And he wants to like immediately after doing something wrong, he wants to immediately give up the recipe to freaking Slugsworth. <laughs> Like without a second thought, because you broke the rules which you agreed to not do, well, and they, then you're mad at him, you out. They didn't know about the rules. You're lucky you weren't arrested. <laughs> also, I got I got a big problem. I got a big problem with that contract thing because okay. uh, none of those kids are over eighteen. None of their signatures are binding legally. What's the point of having kids sign a contract? Uh, well, I think that's why the adults were there. But the adults have to sign it, not the kids. The kids are the ones that sign the contract. I guess that's true. Uh, maybe something to do with being in the presence of their adult. Still, I don't no. know what that wouldn't work. I don't know where did this take place? England, right? Oh, uh, maybe they got or different London? laws. Yeah. I don't know. Also, do you think where these tickets went were? planned out by Willy Wonka or were they completely random? My theory is the guy who pretends to be Slug Woodsworth has mm-hmm. all five chocolate bars. And he plants them? He plants them and that's how he is at every place. Because as soon as they find it, he's standing right he's there. He's always there. Yeah. He's there. Yeah. So I, He knows it to be discovered. Yeah, so I think okay. he has them and he's planting them and that's why he knows who has it and when they have it. That makes sense because I was going to say one is found in Germany. That's the first one. Mm -hmm. Augustus Gloop. Yeah. Three of them are found in America. Are they all American? I believe that Mike TV. Mike TV is definitely American. I know Mike TV and uh, Violet Beauregard are from America. I don't know about Veruca Salt. She might not be. Yeah, I don't think she is. Okay. Well, wherever they're from and, and then. If it's random, what are the chances that it it's literally goes to Charlie or it would have been anyone who's right around the corner from the factory? Yeah, well, like, like I said, I think they were planted. Yeah, well, that definitely makes more sense. I don't know. Um, I don't know if the book mentions any of that, though. I don't. I doubt it does. I read the book in fourth grade, and I remember liking it, but I remember it being scarier, like a lot more creepy. Yeah. Well, that's. But I never. The new one is supposed to be more true to the book. Yeah, and, and that's what they said. But then I remember when I watched it, I was like, I don't even remember the book enough to be able to say if that's true or not. No. I just remember <laughs> I remember one part in the book that really stood out to me was when he was talking about the fizzy lifting drink. And he was saying that they didn't know what the effects were going to be or how permanent they were going to be. And they made the mistake of testing it outside and one Oompa Loompa drank it and then floated away into the sun. <laughs> and- <laughs> um, well, let's get into each of the kids. So first we have Augustus Gloop. Okay. Our nephew, which. Yes. <laughs> Named after Augustus. Gloop. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so he is from Germany and he's a fat little kid. Correct. And loves everything. <laughs> Goes everything f- and falls into the chocolate river and gets sucked up into a pipe. Oh, so I think this might be where I got my fear of being trapped like this. Yeah. This scene literally makes me very uncomfortable every time I watch it because <laughs> I have a fear. I have a fear of being um, not like a claustrophobic fear necessarily, but a fear of being st- stuck somewhere uh-huh. with my arms like pinned down to my side yeah like uh oh like i i can't read stories about these kids who like fall in wells and stuff like that oh my gosh i, I it's it's horrible like just thinking about it i, I get shaky <laughs> i and doubt so, i doubt I that comes stuff. from this movie i think claustrophobia is just a normal stressor i think most people are afraid of being yeah, stuck maybe. in tight places but I see, but here's the thing is like, if I, I were to able to have my hands like in front of me, uh-huh. like right in front of my chest, you know, and I was still pinned, I don't have that same fear. But if they were, if they were pinned down to my side or above my head, it's a whole different story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he would have definitely died, right? There's no way Augustus Gloop could have survived this. 
Well, he would have he would have gotten sucked into the sucking pipe, but gotten stuck before he got into it at the bottom underneath yeah, the chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Which um, I, what a way to go though. I mean, in that it does look to be honest though, it looks like it's chocolate water. It doesn't look appetizing at all. No, no, it looks awful. Um, in, and it's like, there's so much stuff in there. There's so much stuff in that room and that's where you go. <laughs> um, kid. so when we were in high school, I don't think you were there, but our friend Bri, we were at a pool party and they had a, um, like fountains that were connected oh, to yes. the pool. And, uh, the way the fountains worked was there was like a pump that sucked water out of the pool and pulled them into the fountain and then the water came back into the pool. Yes. And, uh, he, we found out like it, how much it get, like it, how much suction there is. And so people were like leaning against it and it would like grab a hold of them and they would jump off. <laughs> he did it and he just got stuck. He was basically <laughs> Augustus Gloop in the swimming pool and we had to like yank him off. But it gave him this giant hickey that was the size of like a basketball, but it looked like a yeah. waffle iron had burned him. Um, yeah. Remember the pictures? Oh, it was so funny. And he ended up, he we ended up calling him waffle, waffle for a long time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he would have, it would have been so hard to just fit perfectly in that pipe like that. Yeah. Yeah. If, if Brad would have been upside down, I think he would have just died. Although he probably would have figured out a way to get off, but he, he was definitely stuck for a second. Gosh. I think, Augu- I don't think Augustus Gloop in reality would have survived that. I think he would have gotten stuck sideways and died. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He would have, he would never fit perfectly in that pipe like that unless no. he wanted to. Yeah. So Augustus so, Gloop is dead. Yeah. He's dead. He died. Who's the next one? Because if the next one was, uh, Veruca Salt. Uh, Baruka, yeah. So the little brute. She ends up getting a piece of bubble gum that is a three course meal that turns her into a blueberry. Oh no, this is Violet. Sorry. Oh yeah, you're right, Violet. But yeah, you're. <clears throat> so Violet it's, it's this special thing that he's working on. That's a three course meal, including dessert, all in one piece of gum, and she is obsessive over her gum and i feel like this candy was specifically targeted at her he knew this would end her well every time something happened he was always like oh no stop don't no, stop oh please like it, it all seems pretty clear part. <laughs> it all seems pretty clear that willy wonka was just trying to murder these kids oh that's yeah it's a murder factory that's yeah. all it is and he set everything up to do it. And I think I feel Ver- like- uh, Violet has the best chance of surviving. Being turned into a blueberry, getting f- filled with juice. She probably... Uh, absolutely. You say absolutely not? No, she did. <laughs> she was probably dead before they stopped rolling her. She probably <laughs> internally drowned. I don't know. I feel the, like the, out of the four... Out of the Moving f- all of your body parts around. It if will, anything. It just stretched if, out if her skin. If she survived that. It, yeah. If she survived that and then they, they juiced her, like he said, uh-huh. she would have, she would just be like a bag of skin. She, you're right. She would be a bag of skin. That would be the worst part. <laughs> but I think she could survive. I think, uh, v- Violet is still alive. Okay. She survives, but she's, uh, paralyzed forever. Uh, well, she, she's definitely, she definitely moves around like she's covered in a net all the time with all, just all the skin hanging on her. Constantly like trapped under <laughs> a heavy net. Yeah. Um, next is, you think she ever chewed that? what's that? Do you think she ever chewed gum again? I uh, probably not. I doubt she chewed anything again. How do you feel about chewing gum that tastes like roast beef? Not very good. That never, uh, even as a kid, that never seemed appetizing. Like having gum that tastes like, like a meal. Yeah. Mm, no, no, thank you. Actually, I gotta tell a quick story. So, 
in the beginning of this one or towards the beginning uh, of when they get to the factory and they're talking about the lickable wallpaper, mm. right? The snozberries taste like snozberries. The snozberry, exactly. So I don't know if you remember this, but you were there around uh, <laughs> when we went to Disneyland. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it wasn't the time for our graduation, but the time we went with my Uncle Ron. Do you remember that? I remember this story vaguely. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and tell it. I don't remember what ride it was. I don't remember much. I just remember coming out of a ride. There's an attendant there, and there's a wallpaper that kind of looks like the wallpaper in Willy Wonka. I don't think that was the intention. I think that's just the design. I just had fruit on it. And he was telling us that it's like that, and if you lick it, it tastes like the fruit. And I'm pretty sure me and Dante both walked up and licked it. And it was just wallpaper. <laughs> well, Dante tried to act like it did taste like it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He tried to play it off. <laughs> and uh, I felt so that guy was just like, I wonder how many people has he gotten to do that? <laughs> probably. probably wick in the same spots too. <laughs> oh man, you guys are and dumb. Got her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not smart kids. Dante always fell for stuff like that, but he was always like so embarrassed. And like he it, could, yeah, he took himself too seriously. Yeah. He could never like admit he he did something dumb. Yeah, he was like, "No, yeah, it tastes like it, really." I'm like, okay, that doesn't exist. That's not a thing. It, it's a not. So, yeah, th- just stop because <laughs> I also licked it. I'm telling you, it tastes like wallpaper. <laughs> Man. So, anyways, back to the story. Back to the movie. So it was, it was, she was a bad egg. Uh, Veruca Salt. Yes, she yeah. died for sure. Yeah, uh, she was. He said incinerated. The incinerator only ran every other day, according to Wonka. He didn't know which day, so it could have been that day. Maybe not. But, but so my theory is that she is dead, but. Ha- she's got 50 50 shot of uh the incinerator killing her but a hundred percent shot of being crushed to death by her father jumping down on top of her yeah if she does if she's not already dead from hitting the ground because if you listen she's falling for a while yeah because you can hear her voice slowly fade away so she's she's got a good two to three hundred foot drop in front of her <laughs> now if she's not burned up She's crushed. And then, yeah, like you said, if that doesn't kill her, her big father coming down after her is going to end her yeah. and him most likely. Yeah, probably. They are both completely dead. Yeah. Um, and then Mike TV. Mike TV. Mike TV gets shrunken. He was, he was my favorite to watch with the interactions with Wonka because I feel like Wonka hated him the most. Yeah. He, he hated his voice. Whenever he would talk, <laughs> and it, it it was great watching well, his interaction. That they tried doing that in the new one too, where um, Wonka and Mike TV like argued the whole time, but it, it just uh-huh. was not funny. He was always like, "Wasn't you? You're you're mumbling. Stop mumbling every time." Because Mike TV was way too smart in the new one. Like it wasn't even like believable. Um. He was like a the science nerd who knew everything and could figure everything out and just questioned everything. Yeah. And in, yeah, see, in the old one, it's like he is like what I feel like people who aren't from America how they saw American kids in that age. Yeah, he was he, he the was, embodiment of all American kids. He was Chris Pratt in the Lego Movie in the Wild Wild West world. Yeah, exactly. Bullet, bullet, gun, gun. <laughs> bang bang <laughs> um, but yeah so he gets shrunken and he's still alive at this point I think he could survive but definitely going to the taffy he... stretching room is going to kill him yeah isn't there a like a, a reversal can't we send him back like you're going to stretch him out that's that's what they did to people in the medieval days to torture them <laughs> except for he's just a tiny person well, Wonka even said it's not a uh, it's a television, not a telephone. So it's only one way. That's true. Because that's what Mike TV said. He's like, just send me back. He's like, I can't. It's only one way. 
But yeah, so clearly yes. all four of these things were designed to kill these kids. Right. And do you think at the end Wonka was so upset because he had designed the fizzy lifting room to kill Charlie and Grandpa George or Grandpa Joe and they survived it and they figured out a way out? But why was that there? Another problem? I never, even as a kid, I never understood why they wanted to drink the fizzy lifting drink. Uh, because it, it was against the rules and they wanted to be crazy. But they didn't do that with anything else. Grandpa Joe is irresponsible and by no means should be allowed to supervise a child. <laughs> but like, it, I just feel like there would have been, they should, they never established that that would be a temptation to them. Cause like, obviously Mike TV loved TV, so he yeah, wanted they, to be transmitted by TV. Why was that their punishment? Yeah. Like there should have been, it should have been like Grandpa Joe should have been an alcoholic. <laughs> or something, yeah. So like, I, a drink. I bet it's really good. Yeah. I haven't had a drink in 20 years. Or even that if they love soda. Like, they could have established that they love soda and just never could drink it because they were so poor. or so, You know, just something to establish that they wanted it. Let's be honest. Grandpa Joe is an alcoholic, probably. Probably. Um, uh, he's so horrible. <laughs> he's the worst. <laughs> His wife. Grandpa Josephina, I think, or Grandma Josephina. You think as soon as he jumped up, she was like, you jerk. I'm <laughs> Probably. Done. She's like, don't come home. <laughs> like this whole time, you could have been taking care of me. We could have had our own life. And instead, I had to sit here and smell your cabbage farts. <laughs> well, so they get to the end. Everyone's dead except for Charlie and Grandpa Joe. And... Wonka is very upset and he's like, all right, I hope you guys had a great time. See ya. And Grandpa Joe's like, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. This isn't right. And goes in and starts yelling at Willy Wonka. You're a crook. You're a crook and a liar. You're a phony. That's what you are. And uh, at this point, so I'm watching this with Harper, my three-year-old, and she gets uh-huh. so stressed. Like she is like basically biting her fingernails. She's so nervous because Wonka starts <laughs> yelling at Grandpa Joe and they're both turning all red and then uh Charlie you goes... You <laughs> stole the fizzy lifting trick, which was strictly against the rules. And So uh, you get nothing. Good day, sir. I feel like you're going to yell at... I said good day! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so... When Charlie goes and gives the everla- everlasting gobstopper back to Wonka, and Wonka's like, oh, "You win, you win!" My daughter was so happy; she like started dancing, <laughs> like <laughs> but, uncontrollably. But yeah, what do you? How do you feel that Wonka's idea, his whole premise, is that he's like, "I'm getting old. I don't want to do this forever, and nor should I. So I want to give it away." Right. But I should give it to a kid because a kid is not going to – if I give it to an adult, they're going to want to do it their own way. But if I give it to a kid, they're going to do it my way. And I was like, ooh, maybe maybe spend two, Very irresponsible. two more minutes on that line and just say, oh, and a kid would use their imagination or something. You know what I mean? Like his whole thing was like, yeah, right? I want it done exactly how I'm doing it now. And it's like, oh, that's kind of controlling and manipulative. Maybe – Maybe it should have been, we wanted to have a childlike spirit behind the candy or something. You know what I mean? I just thought of a new theory. Oh. So how do you think Slugworth feels, or the guy who is Slugworth, when he finds out that this guy that he's been working for, for who knows how long, he's like his right-hand man. He says, hey, Slugsworth, it's time for me to retire. I- I'm I'm done. And I'm ready for my replacement. And you're going to be the one to help me. I want you to go find a kid to come be your new boss. And then so he's like, look, here's five tickets. I want you to find five kids that you think are smart and imaginative and would be great. And he just went and found the five worst kids he could find. <laughs> he's like, that'll teach you. Well, that guy, Slugsworth, wasn't actually Slugsworth. No, I know. I'm saying the guy who pretended to be Slugsworth. He worked with Wonka. Yeah, yeah. So why doesn't he get a shot at running the factory? Well, because if gotta... anything, that's the guy who would run it. Like Wonka would want it to be ran. 
Um, I don't, I, I don't. Do you think if Charlie had not given back the gobstopper and they had left, he would have just done the whole thing over again? I think he would have figured out new kids? a new plan. Yeah, I think I don't know if he would have done it the same way, but I think he would have. He would have been like creepily inviting kids to his char- chocolate factory. Kids keep coming in and not leaving. Yes. Oh, oh, Wonka and your flawed plans. Yeah, it's, uh, I feel like it's, that's too much to give to a kid who, especially a really poor kid. I just, I, I don't think it ended well. I think they, they went bankrupt in probably two years. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, especially because the everlasting gobstopper was supposed to be a big thing. And, uh, yeah. You buy that once. Like, how much are you going to charge for an everlasting gobstopper? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, exactly. What, what kind of marketing is that? This is the only time you'll ever buy this. It better be $500. <laughs> also, do you think, uh, when they were done with the factory and they went home, like, Grandpa Joe wasn't allowed to just sit in bed anymore. Like, no, you've already shown work. what you do. You're working. Yeah, if he didn't get the, the chocolate factory, Grandpa Joe would be working in the salt mine. Oh, yeah, no, I would have put him out on the street. Well, like, you know what? You can work. I'm sitting at home. You're going to make my cabbage water from now on. <laughs> <laughs> so if uh Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory comes on, are you going to watch it? What are you doing? I will watch it every time. Yeah. Mainly I, for Gene Wilder. He makes the movie. He is the best part of this movie. Um, but I, I, I love the movie in general. It's I will watch it at I like, all times. I like the songs. I don't really need to watch the movie anymore, though. Yeah, but that's because you've seen it recently. That's true. But I also didn't but really care. To, what's that? The songs are fantastic. All right. Well, do you have a movie you want to see? I do. In a second. Um, I okay. So I want to see the movie Whiplash. Have you seen this? The one about drumming. Uh, yeah, I think with J.K. Simmons. Yes. Yeah, that one. I have not seen it. Have you seen it? I have not. Hey, I've I've heard amazing things about it, and. I've never seen it, and I want to see it. Yeah, it's supposed to be good. I I haven't seen it either. Do you have any other updates? Movies that you said you wanted to see that you have now seen? Um, Well, we forgot on the last episode. I was wanting to do this Uh every episode. But current events. Oh, Oh, current events. That's right. Yeah. Let me see. What week is it now? This is going to be New Year's Day. Or New Year's Eve. Sorry. This is New Year's Eve. New Year's Everyone Eve. is gathered around the radio. <laughs> well, so what what are the current events going on for New Year's Eve? Um, well, they're having Donald Trump do the New Year's Day or New Year's Eve party, drop the ball. So that's going to be fun. Is it all gold plated this year? It's orange. Oh, wow. That's fancy. And is it's it- got a just ref- got a blonde toupee. Just reflecting off of his skin. It's just his face. <laughs> do you, He's actually doing it with him. Do you think he will still be the president at this point? Do you think he'll make it the entire year? I think he finishes the year. Yeah. Do you think he makes it's it to the fish- next year? That like, I don't know. Like to next to uh, New Year's Eve 2018? Yeah. Uh, because he's got the job for four years. Have you? Can you? Yeah, on paper. <laughs> before he became president, I. Uh-huh. Uh, this has never been a thing where people were like, "I don't know if he can survive for four years." I don't think he's going to make it. I don't know if it's either going to be. He, I, I. I don't know. I don't know if he does. I don't know if he does the four years. I don't think so. I'm shocked he's made it this long, actually. I I legit am just waiting for him to quit. Be like, I'm done. This was just for fun. I thought it'd be fun. It's not as fun as I thought. 
I'm done. Yeah. Well, like I was thinking about it. It's amazing that I cannot even think about all the controversies that have come up with him. Yeah. In, in one year, in one year, there's been like every day, there's something new that's going on that people are talking about. And each time because there's something he's new, the reality star. Yeah. Each time something new happens, it just wipes over something old that happened. Yep. It would literally be no different than if like Kim Kardashian became president. Uh, I, I'll give him more credit than that. I think he, he's got a better chance than Kim Kardashian, but not, not by a lot. Well, as far as like drama and in the news. Yeah. He like runs off of that. Oh, for sure. He loves it. It's crazy. Anyways, didn't mean to turn this into Donald Trump hour. So you're listening to the Trump podcast with Taylor and Allen. Trump talk. <laughs> Trump talk. All right. But you can get a hold of us on Twitter at I seen that pod. You can get a hold of me directly at Allen RJR. And I am at Taylor Enixon. And if you like this podcast and you want to hear us uh, two weeks early, two weeks in advance, you can go over to Patreon and for a dollar, um, you can help support our show and help us decide who is a better person. And at the end of the month, whoever is in, I, I always want to say whoever's in the lead, whoever is behind, whoever is not in the lead will have to whoever pay. Whoever is the loser loses. Will pay the punishment, um, and have to pay a penalty. And that will Correct. be decided in the month of what it will be. So we, we currently don't know what the punishment is for December. Uh, November is, we got a couple options. Going. I imagine by now, Alan has already had his pepper. <laughs> but, yeah, he left it really open. Turns out it was just a green bell pepper. <laughs> just green bell peppers. It was just his lunch. Yep. Just a stuffed pepper. Stuffed. Yeah. Stuffed with ground it's, meat. It was actually pretty good. I enjoyed it. I might have one again. I wish I lost. <laughs>